Astronauts are making drugs. Floating 250 miles above your head, there's a lab. And inside that lab, we're making drugs, but not the kind of drugs you're thinking of. These are the kinds of drugs that could cure cancers, blindness, maybe even diseases that don't have treatments yet. Nothing we do on Earth compares. When you're designing a drug, you are designing a key to go into a lock. As our technology gets better, things that sound crazy are gonna become more and more real every year. If you watch this channel, you know that I make videos on bleeding edge tech that has the potential to change the world. This is a story about a technology that could change the way we make life-saving drugs and help us build a better future. We see this as the most logical next step for the industry. We're actually sending tumors to space, treating them with drugs and seeing if they're effective. We are able to send more and more experiments up there. So today we're going to answer three big questions. How are we making medicine in space? What do those breakthroughs mean for the future? And my biggest question, have we been manufacturing drugs in entirely wrong by making them on Earth. To help answer that, we're even gonna go interview an astronaut. I'm Katie Coleman, and I'm an astronaut. And thank you to Framer for sponsoring this video. Okay, number one, why make medicines in space? To understand why we're spending millions of dollars to send drugs into space, you first have to understand how we typically make medication on Earth. On Earth, most medications are made in labs where we control the temperature and the chemical formulation with incredible precision. Many diseases are caused by a problem with a specific protein in the body. So when scientists design a new medicine, they often target that one protein to block it, to repair it, or to copy what it does. And for all proteins, their specific shape dictates their function. Some proteins are shaped to break down food, others to send signals, and others to fight infections. The bad proteins send signals to inhibit our body's immune response. So we want to shut those proteins down. To do that, we have to design an inhibitor that latches onto the protein and renders it useless. And so if we want to design a drug that fits the protein perfectly, we need to see it shaped in extreme detail, as if we were designing a key that perfectly fits into a lock. One way for us to do that is to grow many identical copies of the protein and then line them up neatly in what we call a crystal. The cleaner and larger the crystal, the clearer the view of its shape and the easier it is to design a drug that works. On Earth, we can control almost everything about this process. The temperature, the pH, the timing, but there's one thing that we can't control, gravity. And unfortunately, gravity makes this process a nightmare. It turns crystals into clumps, twists them into the wrong shapes, and it grows them with defects. So in trying to overcome this, scientists asked a wild question. What if we just got rid of gravity and did this in space? So scientists start sending protein crystal experiments on NASA rockets to the International Space Station, and the results were unbelievable. We found that in microgravity, the molecules floated evenly, and it was much easier to grow the perfect crystal with fewer defects than anything made on Earth. One of the experiments that we did was um, protein crystal growth. And they said, well, how big are the crystals? I said, well, how big is the tube? They said, eight millimeters. I go, well, then they're about two and a half. And they were like, you mean point two? You mean tiny, little, tiny, tiny things? I'm like, no, there's like a little palace growing here. And that would never happen on Earth. And it would never happen on Earth. What you could do in microgravity is you could really slow down the process of crystal growth and give time for the proteins to find the right site and get really nice ordered crystals. So crystallization is critical for safety and effectiveness of a lot of drug products. And microgravity lets you make better products across both small molecules and biologics. So with the theory proven, we were off to the races. But what did we do with it next? Well, an incredibly ambitious use of this technology so far has been for one of our most important drugs in the fight against cancer. Breaking news from Merck this morning. How big a deal is this for people with cancer? This is a huge deal. Keytruda is part of a new class of drugs that helps the immune system target and kill cancer cells with amazing precision. It's showing great promise treating people with advanced lung cancer. They actually ended the clinical trials for the drug early because it was so effective. It would be unethical not to give it to people. But the problem was that it could only be given via an IV, which means that it's expensive and only people that have access to infusion centers could use it. So we needed to figure out a way to make it into a shot. So in 2019, they sent it up to space and they came back with amazing news. Merck published a paper back in 2019 where they showed that when you crystallize the protein here on Earth, you have a wide distribution on the particle size. But when you go and run that process again in space, every crystal is exactly the same size. They're all uniform. And that really opens the door to making something like a medicine. The proteins crystallize uniformly and it unlocked this new delivery mechanism. That is a huge deal because it allows us to bring this incredible life-saving drug to areas that don't have infusion centers. And speaking of new technology enabling new things, I want to tell you
about Framer because they're awesome. It is a no-code AI website builder. There are so many people in the MBT community that are working towards building careers, communities, and lives to make the world a better place, and Framer helps you bring those ideas to life. By just typing what you need, Framer's AI can spin up a full landing page in minutes with an AI chat to customize every detail. I'm currently rebuilding the Nothing But Tech website, and I've been absolutely mind blown by how good this tech is. It means that you're no longer limited by your technical ability to code, but instead the exponential factor is just the ideas in your head. If you're a builder, this is an amazing tool to help you create your dream business and your dream website. You can use our custom link in the description below to get a free month of Framer Pro for free with the code Nothing But Tech 2025. And thank you so much to Framer for supporting the show. So why aren't we doing this for every single drug? In the 1980s, launching into low Earth orbit cost around $24,700 per pound. And even by the 2000s, it still cost tens of thousands of dollars per pound. Enter SpaceX. Reusable rockets have completely changed the economics. A Falcon 9 launch today costs only $1,225 per pound, which is roughly a 20-fold drop in price. Instead of discarding the rocket after each flight like we used to, SpaceX now lands and reuses the rocket, which has significantly reduced the cost and also increased the amount of launches that we're able to do every single year. So now companies are setting up experiments without astronauts. First, you have to get your materials to space, so they get loaded onto a capsule. What's really special about Varda is that we can do all of that autonomously independent of space stations with no astronauts on board. This means private companies can now launch fully autonomous labs on rockets like the Falcon 9. They pre-set up the experiment on Earth and then they just launch it into space with no person needed on board to actually execute the experiment. Once the experiment is complete, the capsule comes back to Earth with the finished product. What does this all mean? Are we gonna make all of our new medications in space and then have them precision delivered to our homes? Well, for simple small molecule drugs that already form really good protein crystals on Earth, we will not not see a massive difference. But for protein-based drugs and complex molecules, the payoff could be enormous. Think more stable formulations and easier delivery methods. And those drugs make up 20 to 25% of the market by revenue, and that share is growing. If this works, we can look back on this as a moment that medication was revolutionized. The type of breakthrough that starts with one drug and then expands into an entirely new industry. We have this amazing laboratory where we can do things we can't do down here, but combined, that's where we're really going to change what everyone has available to them for their health. I am so excited about the future, and on this channel we make optimistic tech videos. So if you believe in that mission, please consider subscribing, and thank you so much for watching this one.